My name is Jordan, like the river. Uh, please excuse my homely appearance. Um, I had surgery on my leg, which is why I'll be pacing back and forth. I'm in my kitchen, so I have room to do that. And I also fractured my vertebrae and my lumbar and have a slipped vertebrae. Yeah, but God is good anyway. And I guess my homely experience uh, gives you more of a John the Baptist in the wilderness vibe anyway. So welcome to the Camelot series um, where I'm going to be talking a little more on self-control. And since we're talking about self-control, I thought it would be really cool to do it in the structure of a Lutheran service because discipline service, they take a lot of self-control. <laughs> it takes a lot of discipline and discipline is self-control and it takes a lot of obedience to a king and a master who in our case is Christians, is Jesus Christ. So I was just really inspired because um, my fiance Donald and I, we go to two different places. We go to the Lutheran church by his house and we also go to the Pentecostal church in the assembly of God um, we are active pretty much in both because we are, believe in the kingdom mentality or if you want to name it it's interdenominational service <laughs> so let's begin because I don't have a lot of time to video record and this might be a little long so we're gonna do the divine service setting three so first is the confession and absolution so first is a hymn we sing an opening, which I saved the hymns. So this is the first hymn. O Lord, throughout these 40 days, since we are in Lent. O Lord, throughout these 40 days, you prayed and kept the fast. In spite, inspire repentance for our sin and free us from our past. You strove with Satan and you won. Your faithfulness endured. Lend us your nerve, your skill and trust in God's eternal word. Through parched, though parched and hungry, yet you prayed and fixed your mind above. So teach us to deny ourselves since we have known God's love. Be with us through this season, Lord, and all our earthly days, that when the final Easter dawns, we join in heaven's praise. So self-control, Jesus had a lot of self-control when he entered the wilderness. He was without sin and he was tempted just like we were tempted. And I think that's a perfect opening song for our theme of self-control, which self-control, when you're not self-control, takes repentance in order to get that fruit. That means change in a mindset. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Hebrews 10:22. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and the earth. Psalm 124, 8. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and he forgave the iniquity of my sin. Psalm 32, 5. Almighty God, merciful Father, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you and brought by thought, word, and deed, wherefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. Repentance, the theme. And I pray you of your boundless mercy for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. And yeah, then it goes on to say, this is what a priest would say for the absolution or pastor, I guess. Um, upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word. See, I'm not called nor ordained servant of the word. I am just, well, I'm called by God, but I'm not ordained. 
so I'm not going to say this part, but Jesus Christ forgives us our sins and he grants us freedom and forgiveness and mercy. So that's great. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So now is the service of the word. So this would be the psalm. Interit psalm or entrance hymn. Oh, entrance hymn. Using the glory of party may be sung. Oh, okay. So just glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and forever shall be a world without end. Amen. I think. Or would it be the second hymn? It might be the second hymn. So let's say, what was the second hymn? May we thy precepts, Lord, fulfill. May we thy precepts, Lord, fulfill and do on earth our Father's will as angels do above. Still walk in Christ the living way with all thy children and obey the law of Christian love. So may we join thy name to bless, thy grace adore, thy power confess, with sin and strife to flee. One is our calling, one our name, the end of all our hopes and the same, the crown of life with thee, spirit of life, of love and peace, unite our hearts, our joy increase, thy gracious help supply to each of us the blessing give, in Christian fellowship to live, in joyful hope to die. See, that's great because that's all about sanctification, which in order to be sanctified, we must have the fruit of the Spirit. And the theme for this one is self-control. Okay. So now it would be the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. So during Lent, the Gloria in Excelsis is omitted. So we will be skipping that. And now would be the collect of the day, which they put in this cool pamphlet, in case you're wondering. O oh Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that the following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of the world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. So this is based off of February 21st, 2021. So this comes last Sunday. Where? Oh, sorry. I was inspired while sitting in church to make this video about, oh, gross. Oh no, it's just a pimple. <laughs> Sorry. About um, self-control and about doing discipline. And I hope that you are blessed by it. Yeah, let's continue. The Lord be with you and with the Spirit. Let us pray. Oh, then when I do the quacked. Amen. <laughs> There's a lot of singing done in this liturgy. Okay. Now we have the Old Testament reading, which they also put in their nifty little pamphlet. So this would be, this is, oh, that's after. A reading from Genesis 22, 1 to 18. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. He said, take your son to your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go into the land of Morah and offer him there a burnt offering on the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son, Isaac. So we know this story. I'm not going to read the whole thing because we're limited on time and we're only doing a makeshift disciplinary service. So the story is that Abraham goes to offer his son Isaac on the, the mountain. God said, you have to do this for me. 
And Abraham's like, okay, I don't understand why you gave me this son to take him, but I trust you, God. I will obey you. And being self-controlled and disciplined, Abraham listened. Like, I'm sure he didn't want to do that. He went against his own judgment, followed God's judgment, brought Isaac up, and then God had mercy. God was like, okay, you don't actually have to sacrifice Isaac. So now if we're going by this, it would be, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I just paraphrase the word of the Lord to you. If you want to read it again, it's Genesis 22, 1 to 18. So now there's a Psalm that matches it. And the one, one we're going to read is Psalm 25, 1 to 10. To you, O Lord, lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble, humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Oh, they have a slightly different one. I just memorized the Catholic one from my youth, and it just comes out sometimes. Um, yeah, so then you would say... Oh, no. Then we would go into the second reading, which is always from the epistle. <laughs> so... Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. Oh, this is from James 1, 12 to 18. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth to the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Okay, so what I like about this reading, we're just going to actually say, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what I like about this reading is that it really matches the Old Testament reading. Okay, so in the Old Testament, we have Isaac, who's going to be a burnt offering on the mountain. And then we have this reading, which is James, and it's talking about being tested and refined by God. So that's like silver. God is refining him, so he's putting him under these trials to just get out the gook so he can eventually see his face in. But sin and temptation is not the same as testing. God tests us to make us stronger and endures us and sanctifies us. But God doesn't tempt us. God's testing is not going to cause us to sin. What causes us to sin is our lack of self-control. We have this sin in our heart and we have this desire and we want to act on it and we let it grow. We just let it grow and let it grow and let it grow and then it gives birth. It gives birth to this evil child. The sin is just brought into the world when it didn't have to be if we had practiced our self-control. And self-control is what the Lenten season is all about. It's about discipline. It's about obedience. It's about sacrificing and sanctifying yourself in preparation for the resurrection. And it's nice because you celebrate it every year. It's 40 days. It represents Jesus going through the desert. It's one of my favorite holidays. And I celebrate it as a Catholic. 
after I left Catholicism, I didn't celebrate it anymore for a long time. But now that I've been visiting the Lutheran church, I'm going to celebrate it again because it is biblical. It, it represents Jesus 40 days in the desert and starting his ministry. And so that's when we're going to get into the gospel reading. So first, before we read the gospel, they sing a song, Alleluia and verse. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. So then normally the pastor would get up and read the gospel. I'm just doing a makeshift service. I'm not a pastor. I'm not ordained. I'm just explaining the discipline that it takes to go through these older traditions traditional models and you have to be self-controlled because as a young person if you want to enter this you're like okay I kind of want to leave <laughs> it's not really a comedy show and a rock show like other church and there's nothing wrong with the comedy show the rock show and the comedy show I praise and worship can happen in all different ways but this is definitely a more disciplined one. You have to kneel, stand up, kneel, stand up, kneel, stand up. You have to have a lot of self-control because you're not really supposed to talk much other than recitation. Um, and I think that there is a lot to profit from a service type like this. But as I said earlier, I'm kingdom mindset. I'm interdenominational. And it's not the only way. It's just a way within the body of Christ. So we're going to go into the gospel reading, which is going to be Mark chapter 1, 12, oh no, 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan, oh, like the river. And when he caught up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. The spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. And he was in the wild animals and the angels were ministering to him. Oh, this is... The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter, was that verse 9 to 15? Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now what I like about the connection of that with the epistle reading, the psalm reading, and the Old Testament reading, is you can see that he was talking about the spirit leading him into the desert. So the spirit of God was with us and he teaches us. And there was a, which line was it? There was one where he leads the humble. Anyways, oh, make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are God of my salvation. For I wait all the day long. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. So it's almost showing us, obviously Jesus is one with God. He's the beloved son. He doesn't need instruction like we need instruction, but he is being led by the spirit into the desert to practice self-control and be tempted, but not give in to temptation because he refuses the desires of his heart. Maybe he doesn't even have any. I don't know. That's a whole theological concept within itself um, and is made perfect and is perfect and doesn't give in to temptation like we would give in to temptation. And so it's that self-control that ultimately leads him into his ministry, leads him to the cross, leads him to death, and leads him to the resurrection. And that's what God is trying to purify in his church. He wants us to be self-controlled. And that's the Lenten season is all about giving something up for 40 days to show that you and I are self-controlled. 
to practice the sanctification of the fruit of the spirits. You don't have to be perfect at it, like, and you should keep it a secret between you and God what you're doing unless it affects other people. And of course, my rule is if I'm in an interaction with somebody and it's not possible to do what I need to do, I just say, okay, well, that's no big deal. I'll, when I'm alone, I will practice that. So after that, they say, praise be to thee, O Christ. Then we go to the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, and is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remissions of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So that's the creed of Christianity in general. It's been used for centuries. There's also the Apostles' Creed, which they don't always say. But I like the Apostles' Creed. It's short, sweet, simple. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge both the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So now we do the hymn of the day. Okay, wait. What would be the hymn of the day? Oh, the God of Abraham prays. This is a long one. There's like nine verses. So I guess bear with me. It's all related to the theme of Abraham. I might stop and explain it as I read it. The God of Abraham prays, who reigns enthroned above. Ancient of everlasting days, the God of love. Jehovah, great I am, by earth and heaven confessed. I bow and bless the sacred name, forever blessed. The God of Abraham prays at the whose supreme command. From earth I rise and seek the joys at his right hand. I all on earth forsake its wisdom, fame, and power. See, so you're not giving into temptation of self-control. Not giving in to fame and power. So if you desire fame and power, you can repent, have self-control, and grasp that sin, grasp that desire, and rip it from your heart. And he shall save me to the end through Jesus' blood. The Lord God of Abraham prays, whose all-sufficient grace shall guide me all my pilgrim days in all my ways. So the Spirit leads us. The Spirit comforts us. The Spirit helps us through. He dines to call me friend. That's an old word. He calls himself my God, and he shall save me to the end through Jesus' blood. I don't know if I read that one. Whatever. He by himself has sworn, I on his oath depend. I shall on eagle wings upborn to heavens ascend. I shall behold his face, I shall his power adore, and sing the wonders of his grace forevermore. Though nature's strength decay, and earth and hell withstand, to Canaan's bound I urge my way at his command. So he has self-control and he obeys God rather than following his own will. To obey, we have to control ourselves in order to listen and be disciplined. 
That watery deep I pass with Jesus in my view, and through the howling wilderness my way pursue. The godly land I see, with peace and plenty blessed, the land of sacred liberty, the endless rest. There milk and honey flow, and oil and wine abound, the trees of life forever grow, and mercy crowned. There dwells the Lord our King, the Lord our righteousness, triumphant o'er the world and sin, the Prince of Peace on Zion's sacred height. His kingdom his, his maintains, and glorious with his saints in light forever reigns. The God who reigns on high with great our angel sings, and holy, holy, holy cry, almighty King, who was and is the same, and evermore shall be, Jehovah, Father, great I am, we worship thee. The whole triumphant host give thanks to God on high. Hail Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they ever cry. Hail Abraham's God and mine, I join the heavenly lays. O might and majesty are thine, and endless praise. So, okay, Abraham's God is our God. It's the God of Israel. That's the God of Christianity. That's Jesus Christ. That's Yeshua, Yeshua, whatever you want, however you want to say it. The saving light of our redeeming, the Messiah. And so God asked Abraham to be obedient to him by sacrificing Isaac. And Abraham had self-control and did it. God asked obedience of his son, who came down in the flesh, one with the father of one substance, as the Nicene Creed said. And Jesus went into the wilderness and was subordinate and did it. So now, if we have the same God, it is the same God, and we have to lead by the example of Jesus, we too must learn the fruit of the Spirit, self-control. That means maybe you have a gossiping problem and you need to close your lips, or maybe you have a temper problem and you need to cool down, or maybe you have a food problem and you need to control your diet, I know it's hard with COVID and stress eating, but now is the time to really harness that and to really work through those temptations that are growing in our heart and rip them from the roots so those weeds don't manifest and give birth to something we don't want. And that can only happen through discipline and self-control because that's what Jesus died to save us. We have our salvation. We are justified. We are washed in the blood of the Lamb through the perfect sacrifice. But he wants to sanctify us. And one principle of sanctification is this self-control. Because if we have the self-control, it's easier to have the other fruits, in my opinion. So you can have faith, hope, love, kindness, and compassion. If you have that self-control, okay, kindness is a perfect example. If I have that self-control to control my temper and my anger, and maybe you did something that hurt me, I'm not just going to lash out at you. I'm going to control myself. I'm going to forgive and let it go, and then I'm going to come back to you. So now, let's go back to... So now is the offering. Oh, now it's the sermon. Okay, so we're into the sermon part. So why does this relate to Camelot? Well, good question. So the part I read in Camelot recently was about Sir Balin. And Sir Balin was brothers to Sir Balain. And Sir Balin lived by a principle. Help people in need, no matter what. And he was very self-controlled. When a woman who had a sheath on her waist that would not come off unless the sword was drawn by a soldier, he saw her in trouble, so he helped her. That was his principle. In return, he got cursed because he helped her. And she was, turns out she was wicked, but he didn't know that because he was living by his principle of let's help people. So that curse said that he was going to kill the man he loves the most. So now think about it. Jesus, I like the parallel because Jesus had the self-control to come and help us sinners. He loved us so much and his principle was that he loves his people 
and that he wanted us to be with him. So he was gonna come and live by his principles and ultimately die and have bloodshed to help us. So it's very similar to Sir Balin because there was a curse. Jesus went on the cross and it says that any man that goes on the cross is cursed. He was cursed for our transgressions and took on our sins when he didn't have to. And it's just so beautiful. So now Sir Balin goes on this journey and he finds this woman weeping and her fiance was murdered. So they were going to go try and get justice, not necessarily revenge, but justice. And so unfortunately there's a tragedy that happens and the entire castle collapses and the only one to survive is Sir Balin. And he gets out and he finds this crossing and this village that says, okay, if you want to come here, you have to fight our champion. So now principle is that, okay, he always helps people and he lives by the Knight's Code. The Knight's Code says you never turn down a, a tournament. You never turn down a competition. So he says, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to live by my code and I'm going to go fight this champion. So he's recognizing the moves of the champion and he's like, wow, this guy's really good. And they're fighting and they're fighting and they end up killing each other. But before each other die, they recognize each other. It's his brother, Sir Balin. And so Sir Balin kills Sir Balin. And it's this bittersweet thing. And he's like, at least we get to die together. And they both die because they end up living by their principles. Now let's take that example and think about self-control. Let's say that we're living in a tyranny. Let's say that America turns into a tyrannical government and starts killing Christians. Okay, are we going to live by our principles? Now there's a lot of people being martyred all over across the world. I mean, there's a whole magazine about it voice of the martyrs. I mean, in China, Christians are killed all the time. Now, would we live by our principle when confronted with that challenge? If someone had come and said to us, give up your principle and live or stay by your principle and die. Now, as a Christian, we should be like the knight. We should say and have that self-control, even if we have that desire to live. Sure, we might have the desire, and we could pray that God will get us out of it, but we should never reject God. And if God has us in that situation, decides not to deliver us, then we have to be willing to die for our principles. And that's self-control, because if you don't practice self-control in the small disciplinary areas, what happens when you get to that big one? You know, okay, so let's say you're a pleasure seeker all the time. You just like to watch your Netflix and chill, and you like to eat all the time, and you never fast, and you never do any of that type of stuff. You don't have any discipline, and things turn really sour. Let's say that we go into a, like, I'm not saying we are going to, but I'm saying hypothetically, what if we go into a Great Depression? What if we have this persecution on us? Is our faith going to stay steadfast if we're not sanctified and